I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加三鞠躬、一鞠躬、再鞠躬、三鞠躬，参加多一点传十一鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。Please be seated. Good morning or afternoon or evening, everybody, and、uh, welcome to the August 19th installment of our online study group. It's a, a pleasure to see you all here this morning. Well, or whatever time zone you happen to be in,、uh, the topic that's for this morning being softness.、Uh, doing stuff like that requires a certain amount of finesse, a little bit of school、uh, skill, and uh, uh, some help from some other individuals. And there are ways to approach that、uh, to get things accomplished.、Uh, well, there are actually multiple ways to approach getting those things accomplished. But the way of softness is the one we're going to talk about. Well, this is the approach that that's Lauda approved, if you will. The approach that is、uh, more Dao centric than some others. And now my, there we go.、Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed, we're going to spend ten minutes talking about technology, and then I'm going to forget how to use it. <laughs> it happens. Where I I drew this presentation from at three thirty this morning. Was from Chapter 43 of the Tao Te Ching, and, and, and this this particular chapter is, is it stays with me. This is one of those those、uh, one of those teachings from Lao Tzu that's in the forefront of my mind most of the time, because in in in, in the instruction of Tai Chi Tran,、uh, softness, yielding, flexibility,、uh, getting out of the way, not overcoming force with force, or central tenets. Uh, of the of the martial practices of Tai Tai Chi Tran, and so I spend an awful lot of time trying to teach other people how to be soft. What Chapter Forty Three says is the softest things of the world override the hardest things of the world. That which has no substance enters into that which has no openings. From this, I know the benefit of unattached actions. The teachings without words, the benefits of actions without attachment, are rarely matched in the world. This chapter of the Tao Te Ching, all by itself, has the power to create a better world. It does. It absolutely does. Once a person understands the meaning and the and the depth of this chapter. The effect of this chapter is transformative. It changes the spirit and the mind of the person who grasps it. However, as with most of the truly deep lessons、uh, that we receive from the Tao Te Ching, learning to apply this one is, is one of the more difficult tasks of, of Tao cultivation for most people. I, I will tell you. Now, even even as a sifu, I have from time to time a remarkably difficult time remembering to use this lesson <laughs> in my day to day life. And yet, every Saturday at ten in the morning for I don't even know how many years, I have been trying to teach this very lesson in the martial context. These chapters, the truths they provide us, and the lessons they teach us, are not things that are absorbed in a day and then practiced for a lifetime. They're lessons that require day-to-day -day practice and renewal and commitment for a long time. And I'm still in the process of occasionally having to remind myself. That, that this verse is important. I want you to remember that which has no substance enters into that which has no openings. More specifically and to the point, in the practice of Tai Chi Tran, the, what everybody recognizes as Tai Chi from every TV commercial and and advertisement one's ever seen on the internet or anywhere else. Relaxation 
and softness is the root of that practice. Without it, one cannot overcome an opponent, let alone overcoming oneself. Okay. The reason for this is that Tai Chi is an internal art. The external arts, what most people are, are familiar with, karate, taekwondo here in the West, uh, uh, mixed martial arts stuff, which is a, a mixed bag of various fighting styles, uh, all rely on muscular strength, speed, uh, physical conditioning, and essentially beating somebody else senseless in order to overcome an opponent. It is the penultimate overcoming force with more force scenario. And and I guess while you're you're young and and you know strong and able to to endure that conditioning, it, it has its place. Um, although I'm going to put in a shameless plug here for most of the karate schools in the West that I know of, because the spiritual component that once was uh, a major part of the practice of most karate styles has uh, has been removed from the study of those martial arts here in, in, in the West. People are, are, it seems to me, largely unwilling to pay for an education in both fighting and spirituality. Um, and that's a real shame. In, in my school, it's not only not only still taught, it's required learning because you can't understand Tai Chi without understanding the Taoist philosophy. It isn't that I'm proselytizing or attempting to to create converts, it's that you, you one cannot understand Tai Chi Tran without understanding the Taoist teachings. The movement of the subtle energies, the Xin, the Qi, the Jing, rely on relaxation, okay? The relaxation is a Chinese term called Feng Tsung that's kind of really special. It's a full body, mind, and spirit relaxation all the way down to the bones. It's not the typical relax and chill kind of relaxation that, that, that one says to, to somebody when they're a little stressed at the office. This is a, a deliberate and, and purposeful softening of the body, the blood vessels and circulatory system, and the bones to allow the essential energies to move in the body so that they can be utilized to protect and heal us and to overcome an opponent. I've been practicing Tai Chi Tran long enough that I can bring an opponent to the floor with a touch. I don't have to, to wind up and swing and hit them real hard. I don't have to hit them at all. There are a few places on the human anatomy where I can put two or three fingers and absolutely bring them to the floor because I am able to move the subtle energies in such a way that it either interrupts, impedes, or shuts down my opponent's body's ability to do the same thing. There's no overcoming force with force. Okay? And I teach my students, and rightly so, that in self-defense, you never meet force with force, but rather with softness. It sounds antithetical to most people and a great number of, of the other martial practitioners, because meeting force with softness uh, sounds like a good excuse to get your butt kicked all over. But nothing could be further from the truth. Lao Tzu knew this when he penned this chapter of the Tao Te Ching. The teachings of Tai Chi Tran would not have been unfamiliar to him by the time he wrote the Tao Te Ching. Uh, the Wudong Mountain Temple had been instructing people in, in this system for, oh, probably 2,000 years. Or at least that's the, the going theory. And, and, and whether it was 2,000 years or two weeks, isn't really relevant. The fact is that Lao Tzu would have been aware of it. And the teachings on using softness and yielding to overcome an opponent would have been something he would have known. In Tao cultivation, softness 
refers to the attributes of compassion and gentleness and kindness and deference to other people and forgiveness, the, the yin side of the human spirit, the nurturing side uh, of our being, okay, that cause others to, to allow us to enter their lives, to open uh, their hearts and their spirits to us because they know we don't intend to harm them, to know their thoughts and to care about what their thoughts are, to create uh, a sense of oneness and unity where, where once there was division and, and derision and perhaps anger or hatred or prejudice, this is one definition of that which has no substance entering into that which has no openings. Think for a moment about a uh, two people who are engaged in an argument or a debate or or some kind of a fight, you know, not necessarily a physical fight, but some kind of a major disagreement. On both sides of the gap between those two people, right, there are no openings. Nobody's listening. Nobody's being persuasive. Both sides think they're absolutely right. Both of them are announcing that fact at the top of their lungs, meeting force with force in the middle. And yet, neither side of the debate is convincing anyone of anything. It isn't until one person or the other puts down the agenda, puts down the club, softens up and says, okay, let me understand what it is that you're thinking. And that's not always easy to do. Very frequently when we get into an argument or a debate or a, a, a verbal fight with somebody, it's because we're protecting a position. We're defending a, a posture. We're defending an opinion that, that we're holding on to as absolute truth. When in fact to the other person, it may not be absolute truth at all. They may consider it to be pure BS. And the other person very often is doing the same thing. In the work environment, that can lead to conflicts with people that have enough authority within the organization to make you unemployed. And so if you really want to defend a, a position aggressively, you may be right. But right may not have anything to do with the consequences of the actions. Softness allows us to abandon the agendas and attachments that we hang on to that cause a vested interest in a particular outcome. The importance of that is that once we abandon the attachments and the agendas, we can act selflessly without expectations. The only expectation we may set out in front of ourselves at that point is the expectation to create understanding, to understand the other person, to see the bigger picture, to allow ourselves to consider perhaps the possibility that the other person may actually be right and have something valid to contribute. That isn't always easy to do. But when we act without attachments, we mobilize the full power of the Tao of Heaven in our lives. And when we do that, we mobilize that power completely to the task at hand, whatever that may be. We stop seeing the situation as a, a battle to be won or a conflict to be overcome and turn it into an opportunity for understanding and oneness. As it turns out very often, <laughs> Living our day-to-day -day lives is, is not so different from practicing the Tai Chi Tran martial applications, right? I'm teaching my students in, in, in my combat class to, to, to defend themselves from somebody that wants to hurt them, to, in effect, persuade somebody with a definite agenda to abandon the agenda and go away, right? The, the purpose of a physical conflict in that combat class is, is 
not to overcome the opponent by injuring them, hurting them, or God forbid, killing them. The object is to end the conflict, hopefully with nobody getting hurt. The the brass ring in, in my school is when everybody walks away, everybody's reasonably happy, and nobody got injured in the process. I tell my students to practice as though war were imminent and pray to everything they hold holy that it is not. Okay? That's the philosophy. That's a good philosophy for life. If you walk through your life believing that every encounter you run into is a battle to be won, then every encounter is going to be a conflict. Right? If every problem looks like a nail, the only tool you have is a hammer. Or maybe I said that backwards. If the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. E either way, it essentially means the same thing. So we try to use the Tao principles to help us to accomplish both the end of the conflict and our lives in a joyous, easy, stress-free, relatively pain-free manner, right? Nobody wants to get hit. I've been hit a bunch in my martial career. It always hurts. Even when we're wearing protective gear, it hurts. I really don't enjoy it. And I'm absolutely positive when I hit somebody else, they don't like it either. So right there are two real good reasons not to do it. Metaphorically speaking, in our day-to-day -day lives, our encounters with other people operate very much the same way. Nobody likes to get verbally beaten up. Some people maybe enjoy the debating and the arguing and the carrying on. One of the reasons that I'm not so active in the tea house anymore is because way too much of that goes on, and I'm not able to deal with it. I refuse to participate. I'm not going to have a, a four-day-long debate with somebody who maybe does, maybe doesn't know what they're talking about. I'm certainly not going to try to persuade them. Softness, relaxation, paying attention to the situation and understanding it, okay? And the proper response to whatever that situation is without some kind of an agenda or without some kind of a, a need to control the situation are central tenets of both the Tai Chi practice and the Tao cultivation practice. What we're really trying to learn in both cases is to not have a vested interest in the outcome of the encounter, to not turn every encounter into a conflict or a battle, to be able to do what it is we need to do without being attached to what it is that we're doing. And absolutely, not to complete the activity, whatever it may be, and then have a huge fanfare moment, let everybody know how, how glorious and wonderful you are because you just got something done. The, the object is to accomplish whatever needs accomplishment and then move on to the next thing that needs to be accomplished invisibly. Not to look for the fame and the glory and the fanfare and the arguments and the debates. Those things do not buy us anything on our spiritual path. But that quiet completion of one thing after another is something that people notice. When we truly learn the secret of unattached actions, of being soft, our ability to, to accomplish things becomes positively remarkable. I'm watching this process occur in my life right now, and, and it is astounding the power that this teaching holds. And I'm not going to try to convince anybody I've even mastered it. I'm a rank amateur. I can hardly wait to see what happens 
when I really have this one under my belt and I fully understand it. But I'll tell you this, the ability to get things done is something that other people notice. And it isn't something that we have to, to crow about because it's something that, that people notice and admire and respect. It isn't just about getting things done halfway or two-thirds of the way or 90% of the way. It's about getting them done right the first time and moving on. I've had a couple of situations uh, at, at, at work where uh, I've had to adopt a couple of projects that I, I wasn't uh, wasn't real familiar with. We had uh, one of our one of our cohorts leave the organization, and and these projects were his prior to his leaving. And so when he took off, my boss called me in and said, "Hey, I need for you to to take these on, and and see if you can get them going." One of them was a, a NoSQL database project, a couch based thing. Uh, and up and in, up until uh, two and a half weeks ago, I'd never touched couch couch base in my life. I had no idea what it, what I was doing. But inside of two days, I had a, a full blown couch base cluster running and half a million documents collected. <laughs> And now I'm in the process of understanding the the loose NoSQL structure and the indexes and all the other uh, all the other objects and and quirks and foibles of the internals of this really nifty little backend management system. And it's turned out to be really cool. The fact that I had it up and running in a day and a half it was something of a big deal to the the people who needed it. But everybody else around me didn't even have any idea what was going on. I don't want to blow my own horn here, but this is the principle that's at work. Two days after that, another project in Postgres SQL landed on my desk, and it's already done too. So here's the thing, guys. In all cases, in all cases, whether it's in the practice of Tai Chi in your work life, in your day-to-day -day life, in your family life, wherever it is, softness and yielding and flexibility are, are critical to our success in those endeavors. I know from, from having been a much harder person in the past, much more rigid, much more inflexible. Some might say bellicose or dictatorial, and they they might be correct, actually. That the more I have learned to soften my approach, the better I have done. I, I can guarantee you that no one in your family uh, wants to be yelled at, spanked, beaten up, told how useless they are or anything like that. I grew up in that environment. It really was no no fun at all. And I refused to do it to my children. And it, as it turns out, the softer and more yielding I am with them, the more I listen to them, uh, the more I take into account how they feel and what they need, uh, the more they, they respect my, my opinions and my authority. And I don't have any disciplinary problems with my kids. I don't. They actually talk to me. They want to hang out with me. They they have fun with me. I didn't have that as a kid, so you know, for me, that's kind of a kind of a new and exciting thing. But I can tell you, I want to preserve that for as long as I possibly can. It's the coolest thing in the world. If I had raised my children the way that my dad raised me, that would not have happened. Okay. Further, there are two ways to look at life. One of them is, is the perspective of softness and yielding and bending and flexibility. Those are all terms within this chapter for staying on a path that leads to longevity in life. Then there's brittleness, stiffness, being dried out and inflexible. And those are all terms 
for a life that's moving towards an early death. One of those paths is aligned with the Tao of Heaven, the other is not, and I don't think I have to spell out which one's which. Softness in life, unattached actions, discarding the agendas, leaving the inflexibility behind, all of those things contribute to a joyous, peaceful life free from conflict and contention. Non-contention is one of the pillars of our philosophy. And softness is one of the pillars of non-contention. It doesn't mean that we lack fortitude or internal strength. It simply means we refuse to fight wherever it's possible. And these days I say it's always possible to not have a fight. And of course, as always, you know, we get to choose what we're going to do. And when we're going to accept the lessons that Al brings us, you know, the purpose of what we're doing here uh, in Tao cultivation is to complete that spiritual education, hopefully peacefully and joyfully. Uh, what I didn't write for lack of space here is that, of course, there is more than one way to get the lessons. I have had the universal wrecking ball of enlightenment come through my life a couple of times. That's what happens when we refuse to learn what it is we need to know. And I'm going to tell you from experience, having that happen is not a lot of fun. It does get your attention. I'm hoping for all of you that as you walk this path of cultivation, you have nothing but peace and joy and an easy, stress-free, relatively pain-free existence that one day leads to the emergence of the true self and full spiritual awakening. Thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. And as always, truly, I hope something that I said was useful. Let's go ahead and do the meeting ending ritual, everybody. Chili. Mian Xiao Huo Tang. Sija Sanjigong, Yi Jigong. Sai Jigong. San Jigong. Sija Go Din Chan Xi Jigong. Xie Ban Yi Jigong. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much.